Today I want to make a video on how to use your RV refrigerator if you're new to camping and you haven't done this before or you're just thinking about camping and you don't know how to use a refrigerator. This is an important tip that you're going to need for doing it. Thanks for watching the channel. My name's Kevin and I like to make videos on RV fix-its, upgrades, how-tos, and even travel videos. If you're new to the RV world, or you're just gonna go camping and borrowing someone's RV, well, this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a refrigerator. This is a helpful tip that'll benefit you. There's a couple things you need to know about an RV refrigerator. The typical one, like I have in my RV, is probably gonna be the kind that you have in yours. It's called an absorption refrigerator, and they operate on two modes. You can either plug them into shore power or electricity, or you can run them off of your battery and propane tanks. The first thing that you're going to do when you start your fridge is to go turn on the propane tanks. Make sure they're connected and you turn the valve on. Once you got that going, the assumption is that you do have a good battery and it's fully charged. If you don't, that's the first thing you need to check. So let's go inside and I'll show you what's up with the fridge, how to get it working, what to check if you haven't done it before. I'm inside my camper now and you're going to see my fridge is right here. Yours will look similar to mine, maybe a different brand, but the idea is going to be the same across most of the RV refrigerator brands. First thing you're going to do is turn on the fridge and you're going to see the on and off button somewhere on the eyebrow board. It's the control board that's going to be on top of the refrigerator normally or maybe in between the fridge and the freezer, the gap between them. That'll be pretty obvious. You're gonna turn that on, and while you're there, look for the mode button. It's gonna be a mode button for running it on gas or running it on automatic, typically. My recommendation is leave your refrigerator set on the automatic mode. When you're unplugged from shore power, which is the electricity at the campground, automatically your refrigerator will switch over to gas or propane mode and run on your 12 volt battery. All right, now that you got your fridge turned on, let's take a look inside and I'll show you some of the things inside that you need to look for to get that fridge working. One of the telltale signs for you to know that your refrigerator on is that your fridge light is actually on. If you don't have that, then you need to look at your battery or make sure that the fuse block and the breakers are turned on. So I'm in here looking inside the fridge and you're gonna see these cooling fins. They're heat transfer fins. It takes the heat from what's inside, whether it's your warm food or just the door being open. These fins actually generate the temperature, the cool temperature inside the fridge. It's what makes it cool inside. You can see by the label here that it goes, the lower it is, the warmer the fridge is, the higher it is, the colder it is. It doesn't necessarily mean you want it all the way colder because you can freeze the fridge and uh, then that's a bad thing too. So you wanna use this thermistor to set where your fridge temperature is going to be. I put markings on mine where I know it's the best temperature so I can know where to put this in case it falls down from vibrating on a bumpy road or someplace when we go camping. I think this is something worth noting and that is you don't want to set your thermistor and keep changing it. It takes a long time for it to adjust. So the thermistor is something that you set and you wait for that change to occur, and then you make adjustments. It could be as slow, it could take hours, it could be an overnight process for your fridge to dial into the thermistor setting that you set. The thermistor doesn't actually ramp up the power, it just lets it keep running and running and running. So overnight, you're going to find when the temperatures are cooler, the fridge will actually get a chance to get caught up. Now you know how to turn on and operate the temperature controls. Some of your control boards on the newer uh, refrigerators are going to have a temperature gauge on the outside and you can set it from there. Mine's an older model, which many RVs out there currently have, so this, this part probably applies to you. Well, if you don't have a temperature gauge on the side of yours, how are you going to monitor what temperature it is and when it's ready for you to start putting food in? In the past, our refrigerator worked horribly and I made a video on how to fix my refrigerator. That may apply to you. I'll put a link in the description below. I needed to know what the temperature was when the refrigerator shut off so I knew when to jump into action. I purchased these Accurite sensors. They have an alarm built into them. It takes two AA batteries, I believe. And you can set the alarm. You can set the temperature when you want the thing to alarm on. There's a sensor for the inside, for the refrigerator, and for the freezer. And they're labeled one and two, so you know which ones they are. There's also an LED display. It's not a lit display, but there is a display on the head unit. And that shows you what the current temperature is for the sensors that are going on in the fridge. This was so valuable to us I put Velcro on the top of the eyebrow board so I could leave that thing on there permanently. The best thing I liked about this uh, temperature gauge was the fact that when in the middle of the night when the fridge stopped working for whatever reason it was back then, it would alarm me and I would know to come back in and I could address it. The problem in our refrigerator was the control board and so the refrigerator would just shut off and it wouldn't start back up and I had to keep turning it off and turning it on until it would finally cycle back on and stay on through the middle of the night. 
And that's when we were actually in the trailer where I could hear about it. Okay, so I'm going to put these sensors back in, get them operational again so we can watch the temperature as it starts to cool down. What's nice is these sensors have clips on them so they can be attached to any hanging position inside the fridge and the freezer. So lastly, I'm going to put these sensors, they're in uh, waterproof containers, I'm going to put these back in the refrigerator and the freezer, and I'll show you later on in the video, stick around for that, and show you the statistics that I get from this that lets me know actually how my refrigerator is working and if it's got a problem. Okay, that's the easy part. We got the refrigerator turned on. There were no electrical problems because it came on properly. The light was on in the fridge. I know that's working. And I checked the thermistor. It wasn't knocked off. It was in the middle, which is probably a good place to start. And everything looked good there. So I put the temperature sensors in there, my Accurate sensors, so I can know what the temperature is like inside the fridge, shut the doors, and now it's going to start the cool down process. Now, if you haven't made it this far in your refrigerator, like you don't have any power or you're out of propane, those are the first things you need to go back and check. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm just going to explain to you the rest of the things that keep your refrigerator from getting cold. The first reaction now that the fridge is on is you're going to want to go load the food in and let's get it ready. But that's not going to work. You need to wait till that refrigerator has actually gotten cold. And while that fridge is getting cold, which could take anywhere from 6 to 48 hours, you want to take the food and the supplies that you're going to put in the fridge, go stick them in your refrigerator at home or an ice chest, get them cold first. You need to take cold food, cold supplies, and put them into that fridge. If you put them in warm, it's going to warm everything up and everything will start getting warm inside the fridge. So when you pack your refrigerator, you need to pack it so the air can naturally move around. As cold air and warm air change, heat will rise and cold air goes to the bottom. So you need to allow for room for that so you can't stuff the refrigerator or the freezer. Also in the freezer, you definitely want to make sure everything's frozen before you put frozen stuff inside. Otherwise, that stuff's going to start melting and you're going to wonder what the big mess came from when you get out to camp. So another tip for loading, once you load your refrigerator and your freezer and you're good to go, everything's cold and it's staying that way, you want to make sure that you click your doors. You want to make sure they snap shut. If you don't latch your doors all the way, they're not going to seal properly. And of course the cold air is going to come out and even your food's going to fall out. So double check the latches on your door when you shut them. And here's another helpful hint. When you're out RVing and you got your refrigerator working and everything seems good, and you have kids with you, you need to make sure that you teach them or you show them or you're around to let them know they have to shut the door quickly. For every minute that that door is open, it takes 10 to 15 minutes for it to regain the cool temperature again. So knowing what you want before you get into the fridge is going to help you out a lot. And if it's warm where you're at and there's warm air circulating inside your RV, that air is going to get into that refrigerator door and it's going to take even longer for that to cool down. So that's something you want to do there. Shut that door. Now we're going to go look at some statistics. If you're getting some value out of this video so far, smash that like button down below. It helps the channel and it helps the video. And of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. All right, now onto some nerdy stuff. I have the statistics showing you how long it takes for this thing to get cool. It isn't a guess. I know exactly how long it takes to get cool. And I can duplicate this process, whether it's in hot or cold temperatures, because I have a running log. Okay, so I'm at my computer now and I'm logged into the RV Whisper, which is the monitoring stuff that's in my camper. And I'm going to check the sensors for the refrigerator. We're going to check a time period. All right, so I'm going to pick a date range. And the date range that I know I want to check is from here to here. And I'm just picking that with my mouse. Once I have that date range set, it's going to go back and check the history inside the camper and see on that day, what this sensor was reading. All right, so now the information is pulled up for the date range that I pick, and that was the 15th through the 18th. And I'm looking at with my mouse here, as I mouse over these little uh, points, these data points, it's gonna give me that information. For 6.51 p.m., the temperature was 72 degrees inside the refrigerator. And to cool down, this is probably when I turned it on. It got its coldest at midnight, so 12.46 that night. So roughly six hours it took for that thing to cool down. Now, from that point on, you can see that these other data points, these up and downs and up and downs, that's the natural cooling cycle. When the furnace shuts off and the fridge starts warming up and it reaches a temperature and it kicks back on. That cycle is on average, I know historically here, every 30 minutes. So my fridge and freezer cycle every 30 minutes. And it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So once it gets solidly cooled down, you see those things uh, the cycles get shorter and shorter. But on average, for me, I know that my refrigerator on average cycles every 30 minutes. Now, if someone gets into it and you open it up, you take things in and out, or it's really hot outside, it can take even longer to cool down. 
historically. I know that from looking at it. On the 16th, let's see how cold or how hot it was outside to see what I had to do to overcome that heat. I picked my outside sensor and I'm going to pick the same date range. This is a great way to have corroborating evidence, if you will, or data to know what's really going on. So if I look at that same time period, um, when the refrigerator was 70 some odd degrees, it was 91 degrees outside. Midnight, it was down to 66. So when the refrigerator got its coldest, it was 66 degrees outside. So anyway, this information is just helpful to know how your refrigerator is actually performing. If you have any doubts, if it's not cooling the food, you may have it stuffed too full or something else might be going on with the burner. But this information, seeing how this works, is a really big insight to knowing that your refrigerator is working the way it ought to be working. If you had any experience with your refrigerator that maybe didn't go so well, or there's some tricks or a tip that you might have that will help me and some other people on running our refrigerators, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you want more information about how a refrigerator works or how to fix something on your refrigerator, I've made a couple of videos that I'll put a link in the description below for those adding a fan and replacing the control board, which made all the difference for us. Well, if you got something out of this video, smash the like button down below. Um, it helps the video and it helps the channel as well. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and you'll get more videos like this. I appreciate the support and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.